Here we are again. Now, I wanted to show you how I start the drawing with what's known as vine charcoal. This is a box of six, very inexpensive. This one, depending on where you get it, is about $2.99, but uh, with student discount, it could be a little bit less. But here is the vine charcoal that we have. Now, the vine charcoal comes like a cylinder, a very thin cylinder. We can't draw that way. So we have to use our sandpaper paddle and start by creating a tip on this. And you're gonna to have to sharpen this many times like this. I'm not doing like a pencil point. I'm doing more like a uh, kind of a, um, what looks more like the tip of a uh, thorn. Okay, now the reason why I am using a vine charcoal, if you haven't gotten the vine charcoal, you may have to use your charcoal pencil. Now what I'm gonna do now is just start mapping everything out and do start the drawing that way. By mapping, I mean I'm trying to get my spaces, uh, scale of the uh, drapery to uh, start. Shading comes after I've constructed all the inner parts of the drawing. I'm going to start with that right now. When using vine charcoal, you're going to have to sharpen it up, get a point on there. It loses its point so quickly. The reason why we use this, because it's easy to erase. If you use your charcoal pencil, the, the stain continues to be there, even though you take the line away. With vine charcoal, you can erase it with your kneaded eraser or your pink pearl, and then it's over and done with. Now I have to map the inside. Having done this, one side is taller than the other. I'm looking at the inner part um, and I'm looking at negative space. You've already done the negative space drawing so you know what I'm talking about. I look at the shape of the inner part and now I do that part real quickly and try to develop the drawing. It's always easier to go down than it is to go up. I work with gravity. I'm counting the folds. Time to sharpen again. Okay, I am ready to now start playing with my lights and darks. So, you're thinking, as I am thinking at this moment, which is the best way to, to start with shading? Now, there is no one way of starting with shading. You can either start by putting in your darkest darks 
and then working your way up to your lights or from the lights working your way to the darks. So, how do you find those variations? You, you have to squint a lot. Why do we squint when we're drawing? Because squinting exaggerates your darks and lights. It creates more contrast. And if you remember the four C's of drawing, there's contrast. The first one is construction. And then the next one is contrast, figure ground relationship. So I am trying to see my contrast. So I'm gonna squint. And that allows me to see much better my lights and darks as contrast. I'm also going to look at what surrounds, at the end, what surrounds the drapery, the cast shadows, because I've purposely picked my light source from right to left. So most of my deep shadows are going to be on your left-hand side. Those are going to be my cast shadows. I want my point to maintain, but I need to now start shading large areas. So I'm going to start with this left-hand side, which is very dark. I'm going to continue up this way and start playing. You have to sort of develop the drawing in different parts at the same time, especially if you're using the same types of grays. At the end, you're not going to have any lines left of all the mapping that we did. Now, for those of you that are starting, you can use your viewfinder to help organize, closing one eye and looking through your viewfinder to understand, really, because sometimes you'll be confused. I also use a... the inside of a paper towel. And this is, I'm gonna use this further down the road so that I can really just see the shape of lights and see the shapes of darks, of shadows. I'm using the side of my um, vine charcoal. Now, if you can see that I'm already getting dirty, so there's a point where I may have to use a paper towel or um, to uh, prevent the smearing. We can use a blending stump to get at the hard, pointy, or um, where the finger doesn't go, or where the palm doesn't go. So I use my blending stump.
Now, when you start losing your shapes, you gotta use your kneaded eraser. You pinch it and you go and clean. So now I've put in a couple of shadows. Now I have to get another one over here. If I need to get at small areas, then I try to break my fine charcoal so it fits in those areas. Now you can see the gray starting to appear. I haven't put any lights yet, so now it's still kind of flat, but when the lights come in, then it's going to pop. Just looking things over, trying to uh, visualize, uh, also determining when I start using my charcoal pencil, which establishes more my boundaries, my very clear boundaries. Um, Remember, every shadow has a shape and every light has a shape. So I'm trying to determine those different boundaries. 